All right, everyone. Welcome back to another episode. Today we have Molly Kaiser with us. So welcome to the show. Hello. Super excited to chat with you today. Yes, you too. Um, so if you can, just to start us off, tell us a little bit more about you and what you do. Yeah. So yeah, I basically, I am someone who's done a lot of courses and I now help people turn their knowledge into their own online course. Uh, but I was not always a course creator. So what usually surprises people about my story is I actually, my very first business that I started when I was 17 years old was a photography business. So I started out in college, you know, just really out of necessity. Like I loved photography, but also I needed money. So I like went to Craigslist and booked a bunch of like weddings and I ended up dropping out of college, going with that business, grew it to multiple six figures and other photographers started asking me how I did it. And I dabbled with like coaching and workshops and stuff, but I quickly realized that I was really busy with my photo business. And then now I'm just extra busy with the coaching and workshops because it's trading more of my time for money. So I had to find that solution so that I could help a lot of people and scale my business without trading more of my time for money. So that's where courses came in. And I taught photographers through courses for over six years. And recently I transitioned to helping uh, business owners to create their own online courses. I just sort of found over the years, I did 16 years of photography and really found that I just really love talking about courses and digital products. It's so, um, I won't go into my entire, because this is about you. I won't go into my entire, <laughs> what you just said is literally almost the exact outline of my story. It's just with, books. I listened to you before this and then I just copied it. I'm just kidding. Oh, really? Oh, oh, <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm joking. I, I'm I, didn't, joking. I, didn't, I didn't hear the copy part when I had that. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you had maybe listened to an interview on me or something because yeah, yeah. it's literally like, same thing, like drop out of school, wrote a book. People asked me how I did it, started nice. to help others do it. And then, you know, so same exact college thing. dropouts for life. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I know. They're always the best. I think, well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, but, um, so yeah, I wanted to, to ask, so dropping out, I remember when I, uh, when I dropped out, it was such like a big decision for me at the time, even though I kind of, I did have a pretty good plan and things were already working out. So it was like comfortable kind of for you. Do you remember like what it was like? Like, was it like a huge thing for you or was it just like, oh, I'm, I'm done with this? Yeah. I, I never wanted to go to college. Um, I always wanted to just, honestly, I wanted to sail around the world. <laughs> like literally I wanted to just do like crazy <laughs> stuff, you know? And, um, you know, I wasn't very structured back then. <laughs> Let's just kind of wake up and, you know, do whatever take me wherever the wind takes me. But yeah. Um, yeah, basically, you know, so I didn't enjoy college at all other than like meeting people and, you know, partying and all that kind of stuff. I didn't enjoy it. I really enjoyed doing my photography stuff on the side. And I just was, you know, watching the debt rack up and I didn't have time to do, you know, a lot else. And so I was just like, and my photo stuff, as soon as I decided to start getting paid for it and like start, you know, seeking out people needing wedding photographers and stuff, it really just took off. Um, so there wasn't, you know, it was so clear that there was a need for it. And I was just like, oh, like if I'm going to school for photography and I'm already booking all these people, like what's the point in even getting my degree? Because I already have a business. So I just decided I'm just going to drop out. And um, luckily I was actually living with my grandma at the time. She lived near the campus that I went to. My family years ago, ago actually sold a bunch of land for them to build that campus, which is kind of funny. Sounds my family, makes my family sound like they're really wealthy, but we're not. But, um, <laughs> but yeah. So anyways, I, it was easier for me to transition out of college because I was already, you know, had that stability of like being able to live with my grandma. Um, and then I already had some money coming in from weddings. But when I started my first business, I only had 81 cents to my name, you know, $60,000 in debt. I had, I had nothing. <laughs> I didn't even have a bed. I was sleeping on her guest bed. So, um, but yeah, you, as you can imagine, that was quite the motivator to like get my business going so I could, you know, move out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's wild when your back's against the wall, like yeah. you, you make things work. And then I do feel on the flip side, like once you have the momentum that like your business has, my business has, like, I do you feel like right now with where you're at, like, uh, like failure is even an option or do you like, I just feel... Oh, no. Yeah. It's just not even like, yeah, no, I actually have a little story I can share with you about that. So I just, I mean, let's see in 2021, 
we started, my husband and I started together profitable courses. So my husband used to be in IT and I ran the photo uh, education business by myself. And then we decided to go in and do this together, which has been really fun. But um, yeah, basically, you know, I was really super cocky, like, cause my, you know, my last business, it was, you know, we were up to $2 million per year, I think before we started this new business. And I was like, oh, this will be so easy. Like, I know what I'm doing, you know, like, obviously this will be like a walk in the park, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, it was a lot harder than we imagined. Um, Not only is it like a new niche, new people, new messaging, all this stuff, but it's also like, you know, during um, COVID recession, you know, like um, ads are shifting, things are shifting in the market, you know, we need to learn all this new stuff. And, you know, as entrepreneurs, we have ups and downs. And I was definitely having like a down moment, like, oh, like, what was me? You know, I can't, I think it was like probably Facebook ads or something I was struggling with at the time. And my mom uh, goes, well, when do you think, um, by the way, I've never lived by my mom during my whole business career. So like, she doesn't really know a whole lot about it, but yeah, she goes, when do you think if, if things are going to keep being hard, when do you think you'll quit and get a job? And I was like, I've never thought about that. Like, that's not an option. Like, this is just a bump in the road. I'm just having a bad day. Like, so yeah. Failures, it just doesn't cross my mind. Absolutely. <laughs> and because you have so much momentum. And also, I was on a podcast yesterday and kind of similar thing came up where I had realized when I decided to drop out, and this sounds a little extreme, but the thought I had is I was like, I would rather be homeless than work a corporate job. I just don't like suit and tie. Absolutely. <laughs> I just can't. And I thought I at the time, uh, like I'd been to San Diego and like warm areas. And I literally was thinking this all the way through. I was like, if I fail, like worst case scenario, I live with my parents and like, let's just say they're like done with me and I keep (laughs) failing. Worst case scenario is I live on the beach in San Diego under a palm tree and 70 degree weather. It's like not that bad. (laughs) And I really thought it out. And that's what enabled me to drop out because I felt like the risk is like, Mm. if that's the worst, that ain't too bad. (laughs) The reward. Yeah. Far out. out, you know, yeah. Performs the risk or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, um, and then I want to get to profitable courses and stuff, but just curious, cause I think, uh, stories, I think are, you know, people like stories. So for, um, the photography, when you were focused on that, if you were to say like, what was maybe your best memory of like maybe a success or like a, a moment that you remember and then craziest, like, did you ever mm. like film <laughs> or do ph- photography for a wedding and it just completely was a mess maybe not your fault but like this would be hard to honestly choose which story to tell like there are just so okay all right (laughs) um most success you know it's funny I feel like we remember the crazier stories almost more than like the you know because like a good day is just a good day it's like oh we you know had good clients and we took good photos and yeah I mean there were definitely a lot of a lot of fun days with my employees where like I don't know like um we would just go get ice cream and have like an employee party. And I really enjoyed that. I really like having like a really good team. Um, And so that was probably one of the biggest successes was when I was able to like hire another photographer and train her and hire a studio manager. And then I was able to just take, you know, I guess it sounds kind of bad, but like my favorites, (laughs) you know, like take those clients and, um, and yeah, so that was probably just overall, it was really, really fun. Like, it's just a fun, it's a fun career to be like, oh, I just take photos for a living, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I have a lot of wild stories for sure. Uh, you know, weddings where bridesmaids are giving uncles lap dances, all that kind of stuff. There you can imagine go. when alcohol's involved, you know, there's a lot of crazy stuff that happens. Um, yeah. But wildest thing that's ever happened that I think people could really learn from is I used to do a lot of conferences where I would have these booths, um, you know, where I would sell my photo services. And so I remember there was this competitor of mine, this male photographer, very old, very traditional, very set in his ways. And I was actually starting to shoot um, boudoir photography and portraits at the time, which is like a, you know, um, like a female empowerment session for women. And this guy came. And so I made my whole booth all about that. And I was kind of transitioning out of photographing weddings. Well, anyways, this old kind of traditional photographer came over to me and whispered in my ear and he was like, 
you'll never be successful if you transition out of weddings. Just being super negative to me for absolutely no reason. Like, I don't know this person at all. He's clearly jealous. And I remember, you know, I was in my early 20s at the time. So it really affected me. You know, I went into the bathroom and I cried. And I think about that story a lot. Um, you know, just how, like, I'm glad I didn't listen to him. I'm glad I did what I felt was right at the time anyways. But also, yeah, don't let those like naysayers or I don't think with online business, I've really ever experienced like negative competitors. But I think when you're in like a local business, that tends, there tends to be a little bit more drama. So maybe, I don't think authors maybe have to deal with uh, competitor drama. I'm not sure. But anyways, um, hopefully that story will resonate with someone. (laughs) Oh, yeah, yeah. What's funny, I mean, what I remember most is the uncle getting the lap dance out of that (laughs) story. (laughs) <laughs> like literally I have thousands of those stories, you know, we could do a whole podcast on that. <laughs> it's, it's always, um, I mean, and, and look, I'm not gonna, I mean, I like to have a drink here and there, but I have found that. Like, I like to give uncles left. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, actually, Sorry. you know, if I, if I have done that, I don't remember, but I wouldn't put it past it. <laughs> Hashtag oh. Miami. Yeah. <laughs> But um, I have uh, found the times where I don't drink and everybody else is, it's so interesting, like what you actually notice when, <laughs> you know, cause when you're drinking with everybody, you just don't notice all the things. Cause you're that's a good it. point because yeah, I obviously was never drinking on the job. So like, yeah, yeah. that probably is why it was also extra like, Ooh, yeah. you know, <laughs> you, like really notice. And like, it's, yeah. it's interesting. Um, okay. So then your story though, then, so you do that for, did you say 16 years or that was only six? Yeah, 16 years in the, in the photo industry and also educating photographers. I was still doing photo shoots at the same time. So 16 years of photography. Yeah. So 16 years. And then you, and then during that though, you had courses and you were helping other people. So what was that? I guess, how was that happening? Cause like for me, when I, like I launched my book and it had success and then people started asking me how I did it. So for you, was it like you were at the weddings and then some people were like coming up to you and be like, Oh, this is a cool career. Like I want to, is that how you kind of you know what? It? This is the best question. And I think I've, I've never been asked this question. Like you win, this is cool. Um, uh, and I've okay. never thought about it either until right now. So really what happened was, like I said, I started shooting, um, these boudoir photos, which it sounds way dirtier than it is. You can Google it, but yeah. anyways, basically <laughs> everyone always like takes it to the far side. But, um, <laughs> what happened was other photographers started seeing my success and I didn't offer any coaching or workshops or courses or anything at this time. So what they did was they booked photo shoots with me and they would ask me questions during the photo shoots. And then they started asking me, well, can I just pay you for coaching? And I was like, sure. <laughs> Wow. That's so, yeah, cool. that's kind of how it happened. It's sort of, I mean, you don't have to wait until that moment to create, you know, to, to share your knowledge, but that is just how it happened for me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think from hearing your story in the beginning, when you said your intro, I think a lot of times like success can come down to like awareness, right? Mm. Because like, I never thought I would be and like- saying yes to opportunities. I think a lot of people turn stuff down too much. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And like, there's no, unless maybe I'm wrong, but I would guess that in the beginning, you never thought you would be running like profitable. (laughs) No, (laughs) no, I never. But what happened is like you, you, at the very least, you were just like aware of Mm -hmm. what was happening. And then you're like, Oh, there's other photographers that want to learn from me. That's a whole nother business. Mm -hmm. Um, Whereas I think some people they're just so in it that they're not collecting data from other Mm -hmm. things. So I don't know, however you want to do it. If you journal, no, those are really good thoughts. And also I was also taking courses and things from other photo educators as a photographer. And then I was seeing, oh, well they're, you know, I was doing the math in my head. Cause I've, I've always been such a business first person. And I yeah. think that is part of why my photo business was so successful is because a lot of creators, they're like, you know, the, the artist first, I've always been like the business owner first, but when I was in these other courses, I'd be like, Oh, 397. And they have 2000 students, you know, that's a, that's a lot of money. And then I'm like, wait a minute, like maybe that's what I should do. (laughs) Yeah, no, literally we're very similar. (laughs) I always thought, and actually there's like a quote that says that it's like, you only need 5,000 people to buy your $200 product, you know, and then it like goes down the line. It's $83,333 a month for a million dollars. (laughs) 
<laughs> it's in the internet marketing world. That My thing. favorite number, 83,333. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. So, so then, okay. So then you do, and that's what reminded me of my story too, is when you were saying, so then you do coaching, consulting real quickly. When you do that, you realize there's a ceiling because you can only do so much of that. And yeah, then- I think I only coached like maybe four people. Honestly, it wasn't very many because yeah. like the people during the photo shoots were like, will you coach me? And I'm like, sure. Like that'd be, it honestly just came down to like, I do really enjoy helping people. You know, yeah. I didn't really need the money. You know, my photo business was really successful, but I was like, well, I really like this person. It'd be fun. And I'd love to help them, you know, and, uh, never, and th- these people were all in my same state. And I think that's where a lot of people maybe would have been like, oh no, these are my competitors. Like I've never seen it that way. I was always just like, there's plenty of clients for everyone, you know? But um, yeah, I I just coached a few people, but then I was just like, I just don't have time for the, you know, I was just like, if I do this, you know, each photo shoot on average was like $3,000 and it was only one hour of my time. So I'm like, there's no way these people are going to pay $3,000 an hour for coaching. They were paying more like 3000 for like a whole day with me. So it's yeah. just like that, that doesn't make sense. I was like, I'm almost like trading my time like down, <laughs> you know? Um, so that made it easier to decide to go the courses route too, because I was already making so much with the, with the services. Yeah. And this, I'm curious on this kind of a selfish question, but I'm sure everybody would like to know too. Is so I've had a lot of success with high ticket offers, but honestly, courses I would say like not even close to the same success. So if you were to, I guess, summarize it if you can, or you can say in I've a done high ticket too, so maybe that will help with the question. <laughs> well, I, I just think like you know, high ticket it, to me is just so I don't want to say it's so easy, but for me over the years, it's been pretty easy to sell because you're selling to people that have money, so money is not really an objection. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's other objections that can come up, but typically money for most things is typically the number one objection or like time or something. So either way, I feel like I have that down, but courses, when you talk about like a sales funnel, it comes in a webinar and then they purchase a course without any human contact. I've always found that just difficult. So I don't, have Mm -hmm. you found any like trends through all the courses you've done or people you've helped of like why a course is successful? Yeah, I would say, first of all, going back to the high ticket thing, um, I mean, everything I always look at. So I've I've really tried. I'm not a dabbler anymore, <laughs> but I was a dabbler for a while where it's like, you know, I tried courses, I tried ebooks, I tried memberships, I tried high ticket, like I've done all of it. And yeah. so it, it is now easy for me to kind of step back and look at like what works best for me. So by the way, what I'm about to share, like this is just my opinion and what works best for me. So like I've done the high ticket thing. And for me personally, like I really don't enjoy managing people. Um, And obviously you can hire a sales manager, you know, try to hire an operations manager, try to, you know, it's hard. It's not for, for me, it's not a skill that I have like, that I'm just like naturally very good at. I am very, very good, however, at managing teams of like creators, like web designers, graphic graphic designers, um, copywriters. Like, I think I just understand that world a lot better. And so I do think that you need to play into your strength. So it's like, if, if a high ticket is easy for you, by all means, like do it. I found it to be insanely stressful. It just really went against what I enjoy doing. And you have to find like what's also fun for you because otherwise you won't want to do it. Um, For me, it's like, oh, I find it so much fun. I I find webinars just so much fun. Like I enjoy them. I find it like a game to try to match the messaging. Um, So I do, I think it's harder. No, are there hard things about it? Absolutely. Like, especially if you're trying to do an automated webinar funnel, um, are, am I allowed to swear on this podcast? Oh yeah, anything. And also, just so everybody knows, I, actually, as you're talking, I'm going to turn the light on. It's daylight savings, and it's yeah, sweet lighting. O'clock. I just it's, <laughs> photographer is uh, trolling it's, you. It's literally five o'clock here in Miami. It's dark. Yeah. I don't know. Like, <laughs> Should I keep talking? <laughs> All right. So, but yeah, basically, if you're doing an automated webinar funnel, you know, yeah. like you said, people are not talking to other people, so therefore, you need to handle every objection. You need to make sure your messaging and all that shit is on lock because, you know, there is no person for them to talk to. So it just depends like where your strengths lie. And if you don't have any of those skills or strengths yet, 
then just ask yourself, like, what's the kind of lifestyle that you want to have? Um, and for me, I am all about like spending the majority of my time, you know, going on road trips and hiking and like just letting my um, courses and eBooks and things sell in the background and just focusing. I mean, whether you have high ticket or courses also, you have to have traffic regardless. So also ask yourself, you know, what kind of traffic would you enjoy the most? Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but right now I'm like really, really into YouTube. Um, but yeah, kind of getting off track. I think that answered maybe one of the questions, but what were some of the other well, ones? <laughs> yeah, I think, um, and, and maybe you could walk through it like this, because it is it is interesting, right? Like there's pros and cons to, I guess, both sides. The, the one thing I just completely stay away from is the middle, which is coaching. And I know I've heard group coaching and what's funny, just like you, I actually enjoy it. I think it kind of is group coaching if you offer it. It depends. Well, so here's what's interesting. I'll just explain. Like one of our services is like we help people hit the major bestseller list, right? So we charge 60K and we'll help them hit the Wall Street Journal list. Oh, well, that makes so much sense for high ticket. Like absolutely. Right? Yeah. And how that works though <laughs> is literally like they'll pay us and then we do the marketing and then they're on the list. There's really not much maintenance or anything. Yeah, it's, that's it's, awesome. Whereas if it was like Facebook ad management or something at 10 K a month for six months, to me, that sounds like a nightmare personally. Like I wouldn't want to run that business. I am very, uh, yeah. I try to stay very, very far away from teaching ads because they're yeah. a nightmare. They change all the time. It's just, yeah. Anyway, sidebar. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what I discovered though, if it's, if, if, if the high ticket is something where it's just like, there's a, there's a guaranteed result at the end and there's not much involvement from the customer, mm -hmm. it's kind of just like you pay, you wait, you get it and it's done. And it's kind yeah, of like, I'm sh have you heard of like Alex or Mosey? Um, oh, of course. One okay, of my yeah. High books. ticket. I figured you have, but um, yeah. yeah. So Anyways, he, I just want to kind of explain for anyone who's interested in it, but you yeah. know, with their offer, it's like, they were, um, like he helped me with my sales script and everything. So I know him pretty closely, but oh, like, nice. um, great. like we were in inner circle with Russell together. So that's how I met him. Yeah. yeah but that up there. <laughs> yeah. But like, just what you're saying, it's a lot of done for you. It's like, they were running their clients ads. They were, you know, doing done for you. And I think a lot of people go wrong with high ticket where they just take a course and they slap a super high price on it and they get a sales team and then they wonder why people are unhappy. You know, you, you have to actually deliver on the amount of money that you're charging, you know, um, <laughs> like 60 grand to get on the best sellers list. You know, if that's going to get someone, you know, a shit ton of traffic and they yeah. have a product that's selling, they're absolutely going to make way more than $60,000. So yeah, that yeah. Makes a lot of sense. And that's what's interesting is that's most of the time the people that buy it, they have a product on the back end because I'm always up front. I'm like, you are most likely not going to make your money back from book sales. Like it's yeah. just not going to happen. Nobody ever, back. or sorry, I don't know too much about books, but I've well, never well, heard of people really doing it's, that. It's in not, my space. <laughs> it's very rare. Like in, yeah. in fact, what's weird, like Alex or Mosey, because you brought him up, like he's made way more money from his other stuff, but he's actually made some money from his book because yeah. it's actually doing really well. Cause but there's that, no, no ads too. It's, it's all organic. Yeah. Yeah. It's just so rare. Now here's the thing though, on the flip side. So I like done for you, high ticket like that, like done for you coaching. I don't like, um, I enjoy it, but it's not scalable. The mm -hmm. courses is the dream situation. Mm -hmm. I've just never really found like, I think like our most successful course is probably done like low six figures, which is great. But our high ticket, like we do eight figures a year, high ticket. So I'm like, mm -hmm. now what the was your, course, can I use you as my student? Like, what was your course about or what, or do you have it right now? We have multiple courses that we've tried. The main one that we're doing now, it's called infinite partnership system. Mm -hmm. And um, that's where basically we teach people how we got authors unite to eight figures just through partnerships. So, okay, it's, so you um, teach people how you did your high ticket program? Yeah. So it's like a course that it's a thousand dollar course and it walks through a system where essentially you can get like unlimited leads uh, with no risk and it's like no paid ads. Oops, actually, tell me who this is for first, because I think maybe that's why I'm not understanding it. Yeah. Yeah. So, or here, I can explain it through my, this is actually fun. It's like a live example. <laughs> so um, here I can explain it best through how I did it with Authors Unite. So we started as being like, we focused just on book marketing. 
So I discovered, I was like, okay, if I connect with book publishers, ghost writers, editors, and PR agencies, those four types of companies or people, they have large groups of authors and we're not competing. So they'll refer me their people and I'll give them a commission. And the way I discovered it is in my CRM, I had noticed one publisher was worth a million plus to us in a year. And I thought I was like, okay, I just got to find 19 more of this type of publisher and I'll have a $20 million business. That, that was how my head, my brain thought. So then I told my sales team, I was like, we're stopping everything. No more SEO, no more Google ads, no more webinars, nothing. We're just going to reach out to every book publisher in the world. And that's like what we did. We And what what's the result of that, that you get your book in more places? Like what's the result well, of that? The, the result was we just built relationships with all these book publishers at scale. And then they referred us their authors, the ones that had enough uh, money to pay us to market their books. And that's when I just discovered, I was like, I believe this could work for any, like, for example, your business, Profitable Courses. We would actually be good referral partners because a lot of my authors want to create courses from their books, so I could refer to you. And so then, can I take your nine ninety seven course, or is it for like authors? Only? No, no, you could. It's not for authors. It's okay. it's actually how I branched out of just servicing authors. That was my way of kind of doing it through that. And we do it for people too, where we'll like basically become their CMO in a sense. And like, for example, we're doing it for a health <laughs> business down here. We're connecting the guy does like IVs, you know, like IV. Mm, drip IV, yeah. Yeah, drip IVs. So we're reaching out to all of the local uh, fitness trainers and we're making them affiliate partners to send them, send us all their clients for IVs. Okay. So the course, obviously, there's no done for you. It's just teaching them basically, you're like, let's just call it for an easier example, like affiliate system or partnership yeah, system. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could be. Like, I don't know. I would say right off the bat here, your high ticket offer, you explained it to me in one sentence and your yeah. course offer, and it could just be me. Maybe I just don't yeah. like, I get it now, but it took you so much longer. And so my guess is maybe the messaging isn't as clear on that one. I'm not sure. Could be. Yeah, no, it definitely. But you like, said you've sold six figures, right? Uh, For this course now combined with done for you, it's six figures that, cause we do offer a done for you for it. Too. If, do you mind sharing how much do you think it's done on its own? Um, Just the course. Yeah. Um, Probably a thousand. We maybe have like 60 students or something now. Okay. Around I mean, that's still enough to like prove the concept. How did you get those 60 students? Well, this is what's kind of funny. So it's been <laughs> referral partners and some Facebook ads. So okay. And what's funny though about it is in the course, what we're teaching is like, yo, you can grow your business without paid ads, <laughs> but we've gotten <laughs> some clients with paid ads. So that's, what's funny about it. But like, no, I, I mean, I do, I do the same thing. Like I, t I mean, it makes the, yeah, it's the a different thing, business. So, yeah. I think the difference though, that I've come to conclude, and this is why I'm interested in learning, like wh whatever your system is of like getting somebody to come in and convert without a phone call. Mm -hmm. Even though it's only 1,000, like I'm finding selling a 60,000 offer is easier than a 1,000. I think but you just haven't figured out your, it, it, I honestly just think it sounds like your 60,000. I don't think it has to do with the price point. I think you just okay. have figured out your funnel, so to speak. I agree. Um, and I think that the course funnel, you know, you're like, well, we kind of got some from here and we kind of got some from here. Like, yeah. you know, nothing will like it, it will all click and convert really, really easily once you find that like one source, you know what I mean? And so like, if like, are you running ads to that course right now? Not, not right now. We honestly, yeah. So like, you know, if you had figured out ads where you could just keep running them, then obviously it would be easy. Right. Cause you would just turn on the ads and for sure. Work. What's, what's weird. To, Cause to me, I, I agree completely with you. I just think the phone call, like selling something without a phone call has always been difficult for me. And mm -hmm. with a course, like, I don't want to get on a phone to sell something. For you, I, like I said, I think it's just different skills because like, I think, yeah. you know, some people would find creating a script and, and hiring salespeople and training salespeople and, and learning the skill of sales. You right away to me sound naturally good at sales. Um, Whereas other people might be better at writing, you know, and that's really what it comes down to sales. Um, like high ticket is just like phone sales versus um, 
So, I mean, we can talk about this more. You don't have, you don't start your course with an automated course funnel. That's more of like the advanced. So I just want everyone to know that that's not where I start, but once you get there, you know, instead of doing phone calls, you're essentially just doing copywriting. That's the only difference. It's all about, it's all the same. It's just writing versus speaking. And so you can learn those skills or you can hire a copywriter. Most of my life, I've just hired copywriters. Um, Mm. So you just, you have to, a good cop, copywriter is going to cost you, <laughs> you know, oh, just yeah, a good no. salesperson is going to yeah. cost you, you know? So yeah. to me, I mean, I've never really thought about it this way. So this, this is a great conversation, but like, that's, yeah. I mean, really, I think that's what it boils down to is like learning how to sell on the phone versus learning how to sell with words. And I started as a blogger. So that was like naturally more my skill. Um, um, yeah. That's yeah, no, this is amazing. Cause I never equated it like that. And you're right. That's why it's always been hard for me to like teach sales because I don't use a script and like, I really don't like, you I don't just, use a script. What? No, I, I'm telling you, I just get on the phone with people. I'm Alex or Mosey would slap you in the face it, right now. This, this is the script, right? I mean, it's like, it's like in my subconscious, it's just like, Hey, like, tell me a little bit more about your, you have book. other salespeople. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't, what's interesting. My number one salesperson, she's been in the industry longer than me. So she like, she knows the stuff incredibly. Well, and when I say script, I don't mean you're yeah. supposed to read it word for word. I just mean like typically you have like questions or like. Well, yeah, <laughs> really the only question, and this is like why it's funny. Like there's no technique to what I do. I feel I just like, hey, like, oh, yeah, what's, your, what's your goal? I just like, what's your goal? And then if they tell me what their goal is, like if I can get them to the goal, then I'll offer the service. And that's all it is. But yeah. Really, I mean, honestly, you just described a sales script. Yeah, exactly. That is all it is. But, yeah, <laughs> but, it, but you can also apply that to copywriting. <laughs> well, that's what I'm thinking. What yeah. I've gotten out of this part is I think our sales page for infinite partnership system is not by a professional copywriter. Like it was me and my, one of my partners, we filmed a course, we did it pretty high end, but like the page, we did not hire a copywriter. Yeah. We just like wrote. So put, maybe it sounds like you put the money in the actual which is good. You want to have a good product. Cause I mean, honestly, if you let's, let's say you didn't put the money in the product and you put it in selling it and it sold really well and the product was shit, that's bad. You don't want to scale. Yeah, yeah, that's bad, not good. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I guess maybe we're halfway there. Um, but um, I mean, it sounds like you're pretty close because I mean, you already have a traffic source. I know you at least have this podcast and yeah. you know, you have, so you have traffic, you have a community you have a good niche and you already have one product, at least one product that's selling really, really well. So yeah, you've got to be real close for sure. Um, yeah. yeah. So I guess the question though, it, to come full circle on it is, and maybe you could use an example, like what is the typical process to get to a success? And I guess some people would say, you know, a six figure course, and that's again, in combination with the done for you, but would say that is a success. But to me, I've always been wanting, like, I would love to have a course that does like seven, eight figures automated. And my guess, yeah. And my guess is it's less about that number and more about like, oh, I would like to get X sales per day consistently, you know? Yeah. Um, Like that would be. Yeah, absolutely. Cause that's the other thing with high ticket is like, um, it's not as passive because, you know, you have to do phone calls, um, or hire people to do phone calls or whatever, but do a lot of calls. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, even if you're a great salesperson and you convert, you know, 20, we had a, we had a girl who was like 50% and she still had to take a lot of, Oh, that's awesome. That's great. Yeah. But yeah. So yeah, I'll take you guys through my whole process. So essentially when I start a, a new course, okay. And this is the same process I take my students through, Um, But when I start a new course, the first thing I'm going to do is, and by the way, this, this works if you don't have any audience. And if you do have an audience, you can use wherever your audience already is. Cause I'm going to use Facebook groups as an example, but let's say you're like, oh, I already have, you know, 10,000 followers on Instagram by all means, like apply this exact same thing to that. But I'm just going to talk to people who don't have a following for their course. That's another thing I have to say, because a lot of people will tell me they have a following. And then I find out that their followings for like a cookbook and their course is about running. And I'm like, that's not a following for your course. (laughs) So (laughs) uh, you have to actually have the right people. But yeah, so the first thing you want to do is obviously, um, you know, come up with what is the result, the one 
one result, you're going to get someone. You're not, your course is not going to be, I help women become confident. Your course is not going to be, I help men change the world. These are too broad of topics. It needs to be a specific result. You know, just like Tyler shared, he's helping businesses with like learn his specific partner uh, system, well, which if you don't already have a name for that, maybe you should, because that would be good. <laughs> well, it's called infinite partnership system, but oh, just that part alone, if you, my high ticket has a very specific result, whereas the course is kind of just like grow your business. There you go. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. really. That's honestly the, like, not only is that the most important part, it's the hardest part for people because, you know, they'll say, you know, they'll start out with, I want to help women be confident. And I'm like, well, why, how, what are the things you're going to do? You know, and we can keep asking these questions until we really, really, really get it down. You know, my course could have been, I help women become happier, but no, my course is profitable courses. And, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm mostly help, you know, I do help men as well, but, um, I'm yeah. just used to talking to women, but yeah, you know, but like, obviously if they make a course and they make money, they're going to be happier, but I'm not calling the course how to be happier. I'm telling them the specific <laughs> result they're going to get. Um, so That's anyways. a bonus. You can, <laughs> yeah, you can so, stack the offer. You will also be happier. At the end you will also be happier. Yes. Um, but yeah, so basically you need to think of that result um, and just think of, you know, what have you done in the past? Like, what have you gotten yourself results with? What have you helped other people with? What are people asking you questions about? Um, are people booking photo shoots with you demanding coaching calls? I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, any of those things. Okay. So then what you're going to do is you're going to come up with um, the curriculum. You're not going to build the whole course. Okay. Just the curriculum. And you're going to ask yourself, how do I get this person, my ideal client from point A, where they are now to point Z, the result, the one result you're going to get them with the course. That's how you're going to create your curriculum. Um, I have a lot more like videos on this on YouTube and stuff. Cause obviously I'm just like going as quick as I can, Yeah. but um, then you're going to price it. Okay. Then you are going to, if you have no following for your course, you are going to start a Facebook group. And yes, I can already hear everyone screaming through their microphones. I also hate Facebook. It is just the easiest way to grow a following from scratch. And you only need 200 people in your group to start. And then you never have to do it again. So you just do the Facebook group. If you have no following to start, um, and you're going to add people, you know, from your friends list, you're going to friend people from other groups, and then you're going to invite them to your group. And you're just going to do a bunch of those strategies till you get your group to like 200 people. Then you're going to post some messages in your Facebook group saying, um, I want to help insert ideal client here, um, with, or I want to help. So, okay. Like I want to help two women, um, launch their online course in the next 30 days. If you're interested I've seen posts like this, so maybe yeah. the people you I've helped. honestly been doing it for so long. I'm sure yeah. I'm not like the only person, but like I've been doing yeah. it forever. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking for two women who um, want to launch their course profitably in the next 30 days, comment your favorite emoji below. And then what, and then, so now you're not cold messaging people. They're inviting you to like, they want you to reach out and message them. So now you're just going to comment because otherwise you're, you know, your message is going to go to spam probably. So you're going to comment and be like, Hey, Tracy, um, look for a message from me or whatever. That way they can check their, you know, spam archive, whatever Facebook decides to rename it to tomorrow. Um, yeah. <laughs> like I, I, I could rant about Facebook in a whole podcast, but oh, yeah. so okay. then, yeah. And then you just simply have conversations with people like, Literally, you would be so good at this, Tyler. You just have conversations with people. Um, and what you're doing is you're going to pick a start date for your course. You're not going to create the course. You're going to teach the first round of your course live. You only have to teach it live one time. Um, I know that's not passive immediately. Don't panic. You will eventually be able to make it passive. But uh, yeah, so you're going to say like, hey, Tracy, I'm, you know, I have so many spots left or whatever. I, I have, I give scripts to my students, but it's something like, you know, we have these many spots left for you to learn this. We're starting on this date, you know, are you in something like that? Um, and then, you know, you're going to try to, let's say it's, I don't know, November 1st, let's just say, and you're like, okay, I'm going to start my course, um, two weeks from now. So you're just going to try to sell in as many people as you can in two weeks. So even if you only get two people, um, it's still awesome because you'll get to do the rest of the process. But my guess is you'll probably get at least five to 10, depending on how many people you got in your group. Um, then you're going to teach the course live. And this is good for like literally so many reasons. Like you're going to, first of all, you're never going to be able to be that person that's like puts off their course for years and years and years because you just sold people in. You have to deliver now, which is good. You need a little bit of fire under your butt uh, yeah. to, to do it, you know? And then the biggest thing though, is most people will create their course first and they just create it based on what they think 
people want to learn, but you don't know what, what questions people have, you know, they're different than you. So by teaching live, you're going to get like live feedback from these people, live questions from these people to be able to take that feedback and make your course so much better. Um, and you're going to learn so much from messaging these people to sell them in as well. You're going to be like, Oh, I thought they wanted, I thought they wanted to take this course because of this, but really they want to take this course because of this, you know, like it's important to learn about your ideal client, how they think, what, you know, what they say they need help with, um, all of that. And then once you teach it live, now you can put it into course hosting software. Now you can start doing webinars. You can start doing the next thing. So just to simplify the next step after that, um, would be to do your webinar live over and over until it converts because most people go wrong where they just put their webinar immediately automated. And that's a huge mistake because <laughs> Tyler, <laughs> that's me. Uh, yeah, see, it, I mean, like not to be like, you know, <laughs> crapping no. on your strategy here, but like sure. I've made this exact same mistake. Like I said, you know, I was in the, I was an educator for six years before I started this business. And I was like, Oh, I, I've done hundreds of webinars. I've sold $8 million. Like I don't, I don't need to do another live webinar. So I automated it. What do you know? We lost a ton of money on ads. It didn't perform. You have to do it live until you hit all those good stats, good show up rate, good engagement, good sales, all the stats that you need um, for all the, for the people that show, which I'll just throw some stats out there, but you should be getting anywhere between 15 and 20% to show up to your live webinars. If they're not, you need better text messages, better follow-up emails, all that stuff, right? Mm. If they're showing, um, then you want to convert anywhere from five to 20%. For me personally, I won't automate my webinar until I'm converting like 20% because I know that once I automate it, that percentage will go way down. So, um, I was converting 20% live and now I'm 5% automated, which is amazing. Most people only do one to 2% on an automated. And you also need to know the stats because you might be thinking your auto webinar sucks. You might be thinking your funnel sucks right now, Tyler, but Maybe you just don't know, um, and I, I don't know for sure, but like maybe you don't yeah. know what the numbers are um, or what numbers they should be. Maybe you just need more traffic. Like you never know. You know what I mean? It could be a number of things. Well, it's good to hear that 1% because I definitely was thinking, but I see it now though. If you if you do the numbers, I mean, even a 2%, two per, 2%, I think we'd still be in the green. Um, if you like, I, I'd have to look at it all like per click per up, but yeah. something like that. I think somehow we might still be in the green, but um, that's interesting though. Cause that's very low, but it makes sense because it's automated when there is no human connection. I think mm -hmm. are you? It, it's kind of unavoidable, even, no matter how good the copywriting is and everything, it's just going to be lower rather than if you get on the phone. Is that, yeah, it just, it just is going to be lower. And like yeah. personally with how expensive ads are and stuff right now, like I'm not, I'm not going to settle for a one to 2%, you know? Yeah. Um, but that's also something you can look at like, oh, well, you know, I like, oh, maybe I need to do my webinar live again. So it converts better. Or maybe I need to raise my price or maybe I need to lower my price or maybe yeah. I need to have better follow-up sequence. Um, I remember one of my friends, Dan Henry, he used to have an automated oh, webinar funnel. We and, did his book. We did his book. Oh, nice. Yeah. I'm yeah. in his, I'm in his book. <laughs> You know, yo, so this is so, you want to know something so wild is like, wait, I which was, book though? Cause I'm in the millionaire secrets one, not yeah, the high ticket one. We did millionaire secrets to okay. the wall street. So we cool, did, awesome. And yet he is like a great example of where I was on his show. Cause he got a big ROI from our campaign because his book funnels into his stuff. So he's yeah. like perfect ideal. So either way, as you were talking, I was thinking of him and I'm like, <laughs> You two should know each other. And <laughs> yeah, I have. I had him on my podcast way back in the day, and such a uh, small world. That's yeah. Great. Dan, Dan's great. He's he's hilarious. He pushes the edge. I enjoy it. It's fun. Yeah, um, and he's very very smart. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, basically, I remember when he because um, I I believe um, if I'm not mis mistaken, I think he made his first million from an automated webinar funnel, and it only converted like one or two percent or something, um, which is normal, you know? So, yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, can you get it to convert higher? Absolutely. Oh, what I was going to say is I remember him telling me that something like 80% of his sales came from retargeting. So like people were going through the funnel, but like, if you only, only have the funnel and you're not retargeting people with emails, ads, you know, different things that could also be where people are falling out of your funnel. So, um, 
yeah, I mean, there's just, you know, it's a funnel and there could be holes in the funnel. You know, you got to look at all that stuff. And um, yeah, yeah. Follow up but once you get it, but once you get it without holes and you can just, you know, pump traffic to it, it's pretty sweet. <laughs> I know like another um, uh, of like Sam ovens. I'm sure you've heard of him. Of I took his program. Yeah. I was in his mastermind, everything. Yeah. There you go. yeah <laughs> he so taught like, us high ticket. <laughs> yeah. So I never um, took it, but like, I always just thought, cause I remember just seeing some of his like just videos and that's always been the idea in my head is like, I mean, we have the high ticket is pretty dialed in, but the course thing I've always thought like it would be cool to know that if I put a hundred K into ads, 200 is going to come back. Like mm -hmm. that would be pretty cool to just know, mm -hmm. you know? So now I do think he, well, you do know that with your high ticket, right? Like I'm assuming you well, we don't even do because we do all partnerships. So what I can say is oh, like, oh, I, I see. Okay. I do kind of, what's interesting is like, our referral partners know our prices. So it's like, that's why I said, it's almost not like a sales call. When one of our publishers refers somebody, it's kind of a done deal already because they know what the price that's what is. I was going to say too, is like, it sounds like you have a really good niche and stuff, but like, you know, for some other people with high ticket that aren't able to get traffic. Cause like we only were able to get traffic from ads and then it becomes harder, you know, anyways. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, so literally if I, like my, the strategy of the partnership system thing is like, I think if you connected with a lot of book publishers, you could create affiliate deals with them because so many authors want to create courses from their book. Mm -hmm. Um, so mm -hmm. just an idea. I mean, it's a, no, wild... I'm, I will take all the free advice. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, and I know what's interesting and maybe we have another interview at some point, but with ovens, I didn't, he, he like dialed his operation down a little bit or something. Didn't cause it was like getting... ovens. Oh my God. I love ovens. that. I, don't, I call them ovens. Like we're know. bros. Yeah. I don't actually, um, I did not know him personally, by the way. <laughs> no, I love it. I don't think many people know Sam personally. He's a very private dude. He's awesome. He's insanely yeah. smart. Um, yeah. He is like, I know people jokingly are like, he's a robot. It's like, well, he's so good with data. Like, anyways, yeah. I really, he's one of the, one of my favorite mentors I've ever had, but yeah, basically. And I was going to talk about that as well, because this ties in really, really nicely. So when we were doing high ticket, you know, we learned from Sam and all that, and we had the spreadsheet, we we're running ads, we tracked all the data, all that. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Ads are not what they were in 2018. Like they're not, you know? And so like, we have actually, I have not shared this on any podcast yet. I don't think I've shared this at all. So this is just for you guys. You get to be the first ones. There we go. <laughs> but from October to June of 2022, we were running a ton of ads. Um, I was doing live webinars every week because I was trying to dial it in, you know? Um, and number one, we did, which is awesome. Um, and number two ads became really expensive for summer of 2022. They have actually come down. And again, your niche might be different than mine. I have yeah. a few friends who run very successful ads agencies. So I'm able to get that data on like where the ads are going and all that stuff. But, um, so we actually have switched our model, um, to instead of running ads directly to our funnel, whether it's live or automated, doesn't matter. What we are doing is we are, we picked one uh, social to go heavily organic on, which is YouTube. Um, and Sam has done the exact same thing, which I find so fascinating. <laughs> and he actually, his program used to be called Up Level, yeah, just Up Level, I think. And now it's called WeTube. And it's all about generating traffic to your high ticket from YouTube. I'm not in the program. So oh, wow. I apologize if I'm misunderstanding, but like, I think that's what it is. Yeah. Um, and Anyways, I think YouTube is like, you need to get on that. Like it's, it's, it's a great traffic generator, but what we're doing with ads now is we're going back. So when I first started my first online, like course, ebook education, you know, for photographers, what, what I did was I had a blog. Okay. Now I have YouTube. Interesting. Very similar. Right. I had a blog at the time. Blogs are different now though. So I wouldn't put all my eggs into blogging. I'd rather put it in YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. But ads back then, I, I don't, I think people just like didn't understand them. They were, I mean, they don't even think ads existed in 2014, but when they did come on the scene and maybe like 2015 or something, um, what we did was we just would create like a freebie and then we would run an ad and we would get people onto our email list. And then we would sell people from our email list. And that's a longer strategy. 
Um, and so obviously it's a lot more fun to just turn on ads that go to your funnel and it pumps out money. Um, but it's just a lot, it's just different now. I don't even want to call it harder because it's actually easier if you just go back to this other method that I used to use. And now we're using it again. It's actually a lot less stressful. Um, it's a lot easier, honestly, you just, it does, it's a longer sales cycle. Um, so we find, you know, sometimes it can take, you know, six months for someone to purchase our course. Um, and we track all of that. We use a software called, um, well, I think my husband set up Google, whatever the Google tracking is, but we also use Hyros to track the ads. I knew you were going to say that. I love yeah. It. I mean, Hyros is like, you know, it's hella expensive. Alex Becker, what in the <laughs> F? But it's good. I like it. It works really good. <laughs> okay. I'm very highly considering um, YouTube ads now for, I would wonder if, um, I mean, I watch a lot of YouTube too. So I'm wondering, maybe it's like a different audience than the other platforms, like, like a high ticket audience. I don't know. Like maybe that's the case. Um, I Um, mean, this is just my theory. My theory is that social media is social media is social media because like I am crushing it on TikTok and I'm trying, and I tell everyone, dude, I have this method. It's working. You should do it. And they're like, my audience isn't on TikTok. People on TikTok don't buy. I'm like, they're, they're people. They're holding a phone. What's the fucking difference? Like, I agree. I so, agree. yeah, no false beliefs for your listeners to be had because I will yell at them. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm with you. Like, I think I think rather than, you know, I don't think I, I don't think YouTube is like a higher ticket or I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But what I do think is I think and, and I shouldn't even say I think I know the data is there that people are deleting their Facebook accounts. There's less people on Facebook. I don't think Facebook's the future. Do I think Facebook groups today is still a great way to kick off your course? Absolutely. Do I think it will be the way to do it five years from now? No. Um, I definitely, I mean, you, you can Google it. Like Facebook is like laying off people. They're losing users. I don't think it's going to like a good place. (laughs) I I think LinkedIn, I think LinkedIn's the future. I mean, it's really interesting. Tell me more. I, I just don't foresee LinkedIn ever dying. Like, okay, here's how I view it. All the other socials are like social, right? Just like friends, but LinkedIn, I can't think of a competitor to LinkedIn and people on LinkedIn, they want to do business. Like that's kind of like why they're there. So now I will say, cause I've tried. I would think that would be great for you given, you know, your audience yeah. of authors. Yeah. Oh, I think it's perfect. <laughs> I will say they're like way more ex- like, I think on one of the campaigns we tried, it was like $20 a click or something. So it's like crazy. A high. Click? Yeah. It was something okay. crazy. And I've also that? heard that their groups, I like, I actually think the reason Facebook is holding on yeah. by a thread is their groups. Um, but like, LinkedIn, yeah. I've, I, I've told my students, like, if your people are on LinkedIn, just do my same system on LinkedIn. But they tell me that, like, the groups aren't as good or something. I don't know. I haven't messed with the group. We we mostly use it just for, like, messaging part, like, potential partners. So if there's a book publisher where, like, we oh, can't, we, we try to get them on their website and for some reason they don't respond, then we'll get them on LinkedIn too, you know. <laughs> So See, that's, that's the thing that I don't like about TikTok is in order to message someone, you both have to friend each other. I know. Um, yeah. Not good. Yeah. It's such a bummer for all of us, you know, salespeople. <laughs> I love this. It's um, almost like they don't want our spam messages. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. You don't want me to send thousands of messages to people on your platform, offering them to hop on a phone call. Uh, <laughs> but like, same with same thing with YouTube. Like YouTube isn't, you know, for messaging. Like I, Instagram is still pretty good for messaging, but yeah. Oh yeah. Well, Instagram, I think you can do like 30, 40 a day and then they like, will give you a warning, you know? So Everyone's like mad at Instagram though, right now. Like it's harder than ever to grow on Instagram. Like they totally shifted. (laughs) uh, Yeah. I don't even, um, I don't know. I'm trying to, yeah, I, I mostly just do stories now on there because I found my engagement is just so up and down. Like sometimes I'll post something and it'll like not go viral, but like it'll get traction. And then other Mm -hmm. times it just gets nothing. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, I don't, yeah, I think they just, (laughs) I don't know what they're doing. Um, (laughs) it's almost like, what are you doing over there? Like, I don't know what's going on. Uh, One day I logged in and like three, 3000 of my subscribers were just missing. And then I, or like followers, whatever the hell they're called. And then like the next day they were like back. I'm like, what is what's going on here? (laughs) To me, I feel like Instagram is just kind of like a, it's like almost your like social badge or something, you know, like, and I don't view things this way, but like, 
I notice in Miami, this has nothing to do with business, but I'll just be like out <laughs> at a party and I'm connecting and like, oh, I and people blue- will be like, what's your Instagram? Yeah. yeah. And then I like, you'll see, I have the blue check and they're like, oh, blue check. Like, it must wait a be- minute. You have a blue check. Um, yeah, I like, should be paying to be honest. You <laughs> are so, <laughs> dude, it's for, like the blue check is just like, it's like a signal. Or, and like, what's funny though is. In oh my re- God. Can you imagine you go to a party? They're like, you have a blue check. Here's my number. <laughs> like- <laughs> no, you want to know something? That's how it is. <laughs> stop. Oh my God. That's stop. Not. No, that's. You know what? I think that's just a Miami thing. Just <laughs> No, it very well could be. I mean, look, here's what I can say. It doesn't hurt in any way. Right. That's yeah. what I'm that's I'm not funny. saying it's the only reason, but I think it They're helps. like, you're an influencer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I would do the same if I could. <laughs> nice. Um, but yeah, no, that's so. And then the follower, I think the blue check is even like more significant from like a perspective, like, or yeah. a, no, I'm that- totally with you on the Instagram yeah. thing too. Cause like, if I go to a conference or any, like, and I've been thinking about this a lot lately, actually, how like Instagram lately, a lot of like, even, I don't know if you know who Brock Johnson is, but his like number. So he's Shalene Johnson's son. Um, okay. She's really big in the space, but anyways, he teaches yeah. 100, pretty much 100% Instagram. Even he's been like, just put out two YouTube videos. He started his YouTube channel. He's now like going back to TikTok. Like, and mm. I'm just noticing this trend, but he, what's interesting is when I go to these conferences, People are not asking me for my TikTok. They're not asking me for my YouTube. They only ask me for my Instagram. And so, yeah, yeah I mean, I don't, until that changes, Instagram's definitely not going to It's just like it. a status thing. I don't think, like, I can't it's Like a business it. card. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't get any clients from it. I mean, maybe down the line because they perceive me as some something and then they're like, oh, like I trust him because of whatever. So maybe indirectly, but I, you've motivated me for YouTube. The thing that's funny, this is like a funny side story with TikTok, my algorithm so messed up because when I first got on it, me and my brother did a video and this is kind of funny, but we pretended to <laughs> jump off of a balcony and my, like pretend we didn't do it. And it went viral. <laughs> I mean, like 30 million people saw it, like 2 million likes. Well, like- I'm sure some of those people were authors. <laughs> well, they were like, are you a lot? Like it went completely viral. Okay. And I got like 250,000 followers from that. Oh. And then I started to post normal stuff and I get like yeah. 500 views. So it's almost as yeah. if I bought fake followers because none yeah. of them are at all my audience. They were just yeah. like kids that were wondering if I died or not from jumping off the back. <laughs> so yeah. I really messed up there, but it was. I mean, I think you could, I don't know. I think the thing with TikTok, <laughs> I don't think you really messed up because with TikTok, <laughs> they're not really showing your videos to your followers because like, you know, if you go on TikTok, okay, you pick up your phone, you go on TikTok. Yeah. I want to be able to say the exact right words here. Let me turn down my volume. Otherwise, you know, ah, TikTok. Yeah. but um, <laughs> it, it says right at the top, you can, you know how you scroll your feed, right? You can scroll yeah. your feed for you or you can scroll your feed yeah. following and nobody ever clicks following because for you yeah. is like the default. Um, yeah. and, and when I look at my analytics on my actual videos, it's always like 80 to 90% of people who don't follow me. Um, mm-hmm. and so the benefit of that is just create better videos and you'll get more views. Like, honestly, I don't think that it's really, I agree. I, yeah. I, but then not- also, and yeah. the other thing that it's good, like I, I think TikTok is a great way to get new eyeballs. There's this girl I know that's like, making like, I don't remember, like $7 million a year with her course with no ads. And all she does is she gains her followers from TikTok, nurtures them on Instagram, sends them to her automated webinar funnel. That's it. Like that's her funnel. It's so interesting. There's so many, that's one of the things I love about marketing is like, it really strategy is limitless. Like it never ends. If you don't want it to end, it never ends. Like you can. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to give you hope. Like yeah. I know saying create better content sounds like people are probably like, what a bitch, but no, like, no, I, I just mean like, I think it, I think you're fine. Like, I don't well, think, yeah. I, I agree, but I also <laughs> say just based on the stuff. Cause like I have 230,000 followers on there and my videos we're posting are getting like 200 views. So all I can say is like that one video that we constructed definitely went very <laughs> viral and it was way different. And now we're posting like podcast clips. So it's like, 
Well, that's the problem. Yeah, I just yeah, think it's yeah. like different. Like people, your are podcast more... clips would probably do better on YouTube Shorts. TikTok doesn't really like clips very much. There you go. Um, so yeah, and it yeah. almost it looks fake. That's what because I mean, for two hundred thirty thousand followers, you should get more than two hundred. Yeah, people. you can look at the analyst. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, you don't need to create a new account. Um, yeah, if you don't want to, and you can look at the analytics from your videos. It'll tell you a lot. Like, you know. Um, but yeah, I've tried a lot. Of, so I love TikTok. Um, in just a couple months, I got like 7,000 followers of, of not of a falling off a balcony, like actual <laughs> like 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 real, relevant yeah. videos. Like legit um, but people that are interested. I can share that really quickly how, because I've gone viral like 10 times. I can share yeah, like no, the please. recipe really quick. I know we probably yeah, need to get going. Um, but yeah, essentially all I do is I just Google one of my keywords. So I, if I'm teaching people courses, eBooks, passive income, digital products, right? I can Google any or not Google. Sorry. I can search in TikTok, any of those terms. Okay. And then what, what it's going to show me is it's going to show me that the first section is going to be the top videos, the most popular videos. Okay. It's gonna, they're going to be the videos with the most views, most engagement, blah, blah, blah. So you can find like your competitors this way. So what I did was I found this girl who um, also teaches courses and she's crushing it on TikTok. And so I scrolled through her feed. Um, some of the videos, you know, 300 views, some 2000, some freaking 500,000. Right. And I'm noticing. So a viral video typically is like three times or more the average view duration for the account. So I'm, I'm looking like, Oh, wow. 100,000, 200,000, 500,000, whatever. And I'm noticing every viral video is the same concept. It's all Canva tutorials. So I'm like, hmm, if I did a Canva tutorial, that would attract my ideal person because I, I like working with business owners and what business owner like doesn't use Canva, you know, yeah, um, <laughs> it's, it's rare, it's rare, you know, um, yeah. especially because most of my audience is women. I love working with men, but since I'm a woman, I just like naturally attract like, uh, other women to my Makes business. Sense. So, um, but yeah, anyway, so I did this, I did a Canva tutorial. Um, I just found like a new feature on Canva, did a tutorial on it. And then I took another, so I bet like that was like a viral concept. Right. And then I took a viral hook from another creator you probably know this creator. I can't think of his name, but he always says like, I can't believe I didn't know this until I was in my thirties. Um, mm -hmm. And I basically took that exact same hook. And I just said, I can't believe I didn't know this Canva hack until today. Like this would save me thousands of hours. Um, and it's then I did the tutorial and 250,000 views later. Um, yeah. So I've done that a lot. It works well, super well. <clears throat> I can't believe I didn't know this blank until mm -hmm. and then so, and you plug in both things, huh? And, and I will say full disclosure, I watch 30 to 60 minutes of TikTok every night, um, solely because I enjoy it. And I that has, it. but, but that has made me a, a good, you know, TikToker. Cause I get to see the good hooks. I get to see it, it's like fun on a personal level, but then I'm also studying like, what's the hook? What's the call to yeah. action? Like what's the story arc, you know? <laughs> and that's the marketing brain that can never be turned off. Once never, you, never. You can't go back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have to limit my TikTok and then I need to like actually go to bed, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, look, what I want to do, thank you for coming. I feel like we can honestly, we could do a full Joe Rogan. Yeah, thing. this is really fun chatting with you. Like, <laughs> um, like, yeah, I'm sure all, I'm sure everyone listening is super cool too, but like you guys should chat yeah. with Tyler. He's really yeah. fun. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you too. <laughs> um, but yeah, I want to, if there's anything we didn't share, please do. And then tell people websites, socials, where can everybody stay in touch with it? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, well, I just, I hope you guys will hope you found at least one nugget out of this. If you enjoyed it, you know, shoot me a message. Like I'd love to chat. I'm not gonna, not gonna get you on a sales call. You know, I just want to, <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so, um, profitablecourses.com is my website. We are, uh, rebranding to freedomcreator.com. So if you go there and it re redirects you, it's the same place. Um, and then I'm, I'm Molly Kaiser on pretty much every single social. So I'm on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. You don't need to follow me on Facebook. <laughs> I'm going to follow you on Instagram now. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be great. I don't have a blue check though. So I don't know if we can be friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. oh, and did you hear that Elon is rolling out on Twitter? You have to like pay $8 a month to have your check mark. Yeah. It's kind of I, I, I love that. I think that's it, the blue check thing. It really is just such a, it's so funny <laughs> to me. I, it, I think he's just making guys pay so that when they go to parties, they can get numbers. I, yeah. <laughs> 
genius. I honestly, hey, that, everyone's like mad about it. I'm like, it's genius. Like, the, no, the most value the blue check has provided me is that. <laughs> so, that's I mean, amazing. Being, I cannot it, wait to tell my husband how that's there's so funny. <laughs> zero business value. <laughs> you know, it's just like, it, it is purely the other direction you're like my audience is 95 percent women <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i like look at my stats on it it's just like only <laughs> because we just i only exchange with them. <laughs> that's funny do you um, own a yacht <laughs> yeah. i rent them sometimes but I that's <laughs> awesome very miami of you i like it well um next time i'm in miami, bleh, next time i'm in miami i'll hit you up i was just there in yeah. i think april or may i really liked it that was cool Oh, I love, and it really, it's, it's, it's very crypto. Uh, that's, that's the biggest thing here, but a lot of entrepreneurs and like tech is starting to oh, come. Yeah. So it's cool. Yeah. New Mexico is just bustling. Oh, is it? I don't know much about it. Oh, are you kidding? No, it's really not. Like I literally out my window, all you can see is like desert and mountains and trees. Like there's no one. Uh, that's why I love it though. Cause I love to go hard, you know, with my business, but then I love to just go hiking and yeah, yeah, nature. And that's like, um, I think the two cities that are going, I was just there in Austin. Have you been to Austin? Austin I lived Florida. there from oh, 2018 there. to 2020. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Well, yeah, <laughs> that place seems to be a lot going on too. Uh, yeah, it was, um, it was not nature enough for me, which is why we moved, but, uh, entrepreneur wise, it was the best, uh, networking ever. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, we, I look forward to seeing you in Miami and thanks again for coming on. Awesome. Thanks. Super fun.